Hey guys, we are back for another happy hour. I'm fresh off the cruise ship, and David, you're fresh from 280. Fresh off of 280. That's but Highway man, 280. You know, I was just, last week was kind of a bummer, because I got really jealous of the background. That, yeah. That Incredible. There. It was beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I, I was coming from With Grand. The grass on the ship. We were in Grand Cayman on grass on a boat with cocktails you can't beat that today we've got the uh the abita uh creole cream ale creole cream ale yep and I, yep cheers shout out happy to my, hour my buddy favor trey favor if he's not available call me uh, <laughs> that's funny hey mark wood how are you let's see all here. right Let me turn, turn that down. down there man I tell you, big day, Masters Week, right? Yeah, Masters Week. That's um, where everybody is, I, I think. I tell you, everybody's watching the Masters. It's exciting. It, man, it's a great term. I love hearing them talk about the greens. I love hearing them talk about the, uh, the the landscape, the azaleas, and uh, the pine needles. It's, it's amazing. Um, I mean, if you've never been, it's, it's a, just beautiful. And, and your, your cheap self probably likes a $1.50 pimento cheese sandwiches, too, right? Yeah, I yeah. Mean, never had, and I don't do much pimento cheese, but... That's hey, okay. Carrie. Um, but I tell you, professional golf, talk about a tough job, right? Oh, terrible. Tough, tough job. Oh, I yeah. Mean, golf in general is, is a tough game, certainly for me to play, for most people to play. Um, they caught a good walk spoiled. Yeah, a good walk spoiled. Man, it, it's just really hard. Now, now, that's a tough job. Now, I know, you know, in our jobs, we get frustrated. Oh, absolutely. Right? Sometimes. Uh, you know, it gets tough sometimes. Everybody's absolutely. job gets tough. We might lose a borrower to another mortgage company or for you another hey, real estate another, agent. absolutely we all had it you know, happen we've got uh you know things that happen maybe appraisals come in low you got difficult people they yeah. get upset difficult lenders uh, difficult other things they don't understand the, the documents you're asking for but i'll tell you you've been watching tv again i've been watching some documentaries i bet okay big documentary guy aren't you so the bbc human planet let me tell you some of the things that these people do, right? Just to survive is unbelievable. Who's different, they? Different parts of the world. Okay, so this is about just like people. people. Now, now, this one story is about Indonesian in Indonesia. Yep. These Indonesian. Hey, by the way, I saw a ton of them on my cruise ship. These but Indonesian good people. sulfur miners. Let me tell you, they go into this volcano. It's the Ijen Ijen volcano, and and down there where the the lava meets the earth. Okay. It's uh. It forms these big chunks of sulfur. And if you've ever been around sulfur, I, I went to Yellowstone Park and it yeah. smells terrible. Oh, it smells like uh, uh, rear end. The, these are toxic gases, okay? Absolutely. That these guys are, are subject to. They don't even have, they can't even afford good eyewear or, or good masks to protect them. I think they said something like 74 miners have died in the last 40 years yeah. just, just from yeah, the gas. One okay. a year. They're, they're risking almost two. Two. Yeah. They are risking their With lives. Auburn, so. All right, they're carrying ninety kilograms, which is two hundred pounds. In the documentary, it said twice their weight. So these guys weigh about hundred pounds. They're carrying two hundred lo two hundred pound loads of sulfur for two hundred meters, which is about that smell. Which is about two hundred twenty yards. Yeah, because you imagine getting home from work, honey's like, well, I'm worried about me smelling like. <laughs> Yeah, when you get home from work and yeah, or you get get back to yeah, the you restaurant and your, and your clothes smell like the restaurant. Yeah, and that's every day. These guys probably man terrible. Two hundred and twenty or two football fields, and they make ten to fifteen bucks a day. Yeah, it's not good. Not good. So that's a tough job. I'm so, gonna I'm gonna stop whining. Yeah, next time you're having a bad day, just uh, is this a science class? <laughs> it is. Yeah, Bruno. Yes. Hey, you notice who came up with the topic? And by the right. way, if anybody doesn't know, Georgia Tech here, right? Yeah, Georgia Tech. I mean, you know, uh, loud and proud. You got to appreciate stuff like this. You know, it's it's, <laughs> it's interesting. I love it. No, it, it, it is fascinating. I mean, all that stuff. But although you got hooked on that, uh, what was that crazy diet when you got hooked on? A few the that? documentary that was about food. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and you were uh, like, oh no, man, I hell? can't eat anything. What the hell? What the health? And yeah. it was what the health, I think. I think it was yeah. a bunch of bunk. Well. Because uh, I'm just going to bite Karen into Barnes. a steak. Karen Barnes is in. Karen is in. Jason Dubendorfer is in. Good to see you, buddy. Absolutely. Thanks for tuning in. So uh, today we're going to talk about a few things. we got chronic sitting, which is now a, a huge All about health science problem. today. Health yeah. problem. We've got older HVAC systems. Yeah, getting to be a real problem. We're going to talk about a little bit uh, uh, about... 
been watching some Clark Howard podcasts. Some, some listening. Stock market. You haven't been watching. Listening, listening. listening. The stock market and some credit cards. So yeah. By the uh, way, if you haven't, hey, Clark's got one of the best podcasts out there. Clark.com, best websites. Uh, he's the king of cheap. I tell you, I think he started in Atlanta. He did. He and, did. And in '87, he said was his first uh, when he started. And I was living in Atlanta back then. I still remember him. Yeah, from so way back yeah. Then. Had the radio show, and then now it's obviously national. And then uh, it's like a it's like consumer police. He is. He yeah. does. He says, save more, spend less, and avoid getting ripped off. Somebody's Jessica's going walking. Yeah, so so we had some, some people in our office today that are going walking. So the chronic sitting, okay, uh, I picked up the uh, 280 living this week and was oh. reading through there. Oh, yeah, that's uh, uh, it's an Abita. It's a local beer, Creole Cream Ale. Uh, hey, Courtney. Courtney, how we doing? Yeah. So the 280 living, okay, I yep. was reading, perusing the... Uh, Newspaper. This is a local newspaper that comes to our houses. Yes. Uh, your Health yep. Today talked about sit less, live longer. Now listen to this. I sit all, right. all day, right? With every hour you sit, it decreases your life expectancy by two hours. Two hours? Yeah. So I'm, on, I'm not going to live long then. So the point of this is is to not sit out all day upstairs it's it's really hard if you've got uh, a job that requires you to sit down i know they've got a lot of the uh, the new uh very sit stand the sit Veridesks. stand desks yeah absolutely that, that that you can sit or stand and they've gotten a lot cheaper i mean they used to be thousands of dollars they, they had they had one study found six hours of uninterrupted sitting effectively counteracted the positive health benefits of a whole hour of exercise that's crazy so if you work out for one hour in the morning that can't be true go to your job and uh, sit down for six hours, you basically offset each other. Do you think that's true? Now, I, that, I, I, I don't think that can be true. Now, Michael Bruno knows exactly where to get one of these Trisha beers. Trisha Ham. I picked the pride it up Pride of Nashville here. or Franklin. Good to see you. But basically, the uh, another study found the women who sit sat the longest daily were found to be eight years older biologically. Who speaking. was? Women. Ladies? Ladies. So, ladies, you got to get up. Get up. You get moving. Get up. It decreases the blood Dance flow. Dance like me. The key to is to avoid sitting for more than 50 minutes out of each each day. He so is to avoid sitting. 50 minutes. More than 50 minutes. So I can only sit for 10 minutes? No, get up No, get up 5 or 10 minutes every hour oh. and move around. Gotcha. Get up 5 or 10 right minutes every hour. Cody Clemens. Yes. Cody Clemens. Hey, Mr. Entrepreneur is on the blower. That's it. That's it. Yeah. But so, man, we get, so we got to get up and walk. Got to get the very desk. Got to, got to get moving. Yeah, I mean... I, I don't know why I think some of this is bunk. Oh, now, getting sitting's bad, but this 50 minutes, so i got to get up at least for 10 minutes. Five I want to make sure. Minutes. Yeah, I got you there. Well, look, if they don't come up with something for us to change and do every every so often, then we we'll I mean, somebody's got to come up and tell me you're dead, right? Yeah. I mean, pizza's bad, Everything. everything's bad. Yeah, Coca-Cola's terrible for I, you. I, I mean, although, I'll tell you what, I do feel more productive when I'm standing up and talking to people, because for some reason you feel... You know, I had a buddy of mine, Mark Britton, posted on... Facebook, he said, have you ever thought that maybe it's just oxygen that's killing us? It just takes a long time? <laughs> well, I kind of like that. Oxygen. Every time yeah. I've told Courtney that, she doesn't listen, but oh, yeah. she doesn't like it. What? what? Say that again. Cor about oxygen? You're no, every time I use air that. from the room? No, every, yeah. That's, that's part she of thinks, it. She probably thinks you're probably. sucking it. Hey, can you, probably. can you just leave? Is, yeah. yeah. Mm. I got to go to bed, because she goes to bed at what? Uh, 6 p.m.? Yeah. Yeah, a little after, a little after our uh, dinner at 4.30. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's up at three, uh, doing her walk. Yeah. Uh, all right. Hey man, what's next? Uh, I tell you what. I mean, I tell you what. It's getting a little old. These agents and people thinking that these these older HVAC systems, uh, uh, AC units, are obsolete. That's, that's heating, ventilation, and air, air conditioning. conditioning. Absolutely. Yes. What's happening is hey, Lori Sue. As everybody knows, in about 2012, I think it was, they changed the 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 SEER rating on. Uh, all these uh, and using a, a new R22 gas, uh, Freon gas, and all the new systems have. Don't use too many big terms. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, right? good, um, good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's unique. Um, and, and what's happening, though, is that by 2020, all, every new thing is going to have to, and we're going to have to, oh, we're only going to be able to use uh, basically recycled Freon, essentially. And then by 2030, it's got all, all this old stuff. Is going to be out of the picture. Uh, all these old units are going okay. to have to be out of the picture. Okay. Which is typical lifespan. I mean, yeah. that's so long from now. 
But but what's happening though is we're finding we come inspection time and everything else. Of course, the entrepreneurs out there have created adapters that allow, let's say, an interior unit that is the firm, is the blower uh, to make sure that the same gas that's following the old system can still work with the new one. And what's happening is these these guys are coming in saying, "Yeah, oh, they're mismatched systems, and 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 you're just going to have to replace the entire system because it's not a new system." And then the response is, hey, it works fine. It's blowing cold air. It works. And just because it's not new doesn't mean it's not going to work, right? Yeah. Uh, and so we're seeing a lot of deals falling through because of this. And it's, uh, as, as Donald Trump may say, it's fake news. Fake news. news. And, and agents, some of these people are just listening to anything they can. Listen, a good home warranty company will cover it. Now, I'm not... I'm just telling you, there's there's some home warranty companies that say are good, some that are bad, right? On here, we're not yeah. going to take an opinion uh, as to well, we will. Yeah. Uh, and I and I will tell you now, I, I've had some experience with home warranty companies that will band aid the heck out of that thing. They will until it completely explodes. It will, and, and then they'll replace it, right? And so, what's happening though? These these people are blowing up legitimate deals. Because and you're getting a lot of uh, even I saw in uh, one of the big newspapers as I was traveling uh, something about this. I mean, the, the fact is it is a big shift into the type of gas that's used, and the systems are more efficient. Of course, yeah. if it's but let me ask you a question. I have one unit at my house that is probably five years old that doesn't run as good as the one that's twenty years old. Right? That's Crazy. Uh, yeah, every but maybe they that, made that, it better. That could happen every now and then, right? It could, but I'm telling you, um, uh, make sure you get all the right information on this and, and, and you're not killing deals uh, without r- making sure that, like, I can tell you this, Home Warranty of America, which is one of the warranty companies, uh, they will cover it. I know they will. They'll cover a new unit. If if you have to, you may have to pay a little bit more, but they, they're they covering all these things, where they're, we call a mismatched system. Because you shouldn't have to. If your interior unit goes out, your blower goes out, you shouldn't have to replace the outside unit that's perfectly good. Yeah. I mean, that would be foolish uh, financially. It's just extra money to spend, right? Yeah, why would you do it? Dave hey, Tyson, what's happening, man? Good to see you. Saw you yesterday. Bradley Abney said, hey, man. Yeah. Hey, Brad Abney, great American. Mr. Hueytown, he was a big Hueytown baseball player. Uh, good one, awesome. too. Awesome. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, so anyway, moving on from that, I mean, I tell you, uh, just don't be stupid. I mean, that's the moral of this story. Yeah, just get all get the information facts. you can about those uh, HVAC systems. And, uh, and and the home warranties always advise, right? Yeah, I mean, here's it's the thing, for, especially for sellers. I mean, because it gives peace of mind for the first year. And just remember, they, these these home warranty companies... They're called home warranty insurance companies. They're insurance companies. So the idea that they're just going to unload their wallet to you yeah. is, is counterintuitive. Yeah you, yeah, you can't call them for every little thing and they're going to just bring out. Oh, absolutely. going to back the truck up with back brand it new up. appliances. And, and there's and some, everything. quite frankly, that won't pay. They'll deny yeah. out of hand, all that. I'm not going to mention names. but Well, they'll keep, they'll keep Band-Aiding problems yeah. until they get out of hand. Absolutely. But hey, as long as it works, right? It's worth the $47 or $50. Yeah, I mean, whether you renew it is yeah, but call, right? but yeah, absolutely. I mean, I like it uh, unless you're like Mark Carlisle, my business partner. You know, he he keeps them going. I mean, he basically has them almost fire him because he's like he finds a need for everything. Oh yeah, you hey. know, it reverses on them, right? That's economical, so, right? Absolutely. Well, let's man, move on, man. Listen, uh, Clark Howard. We we spoke uh, mentioned him earlier. Yeah, guy started in Atlanta. Uh, big consumer advocate for just. Uh, just getting information in the marketplace about all kinds of things. And, and one of the podcasts I listened to uh, yesterday just had a lot of great information about the stock market that I thought was interesting. You know, he talked about how the stock market's been on such a yo-yo lately. Okay, just in the last five to ten days, we have been up 700 points. Been a yo-yo. Down 500 points. I can't figure out how this mirror. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We're very but, mirrored. But big, a lot of volatility, okay? Up 700, down 500, up 400, down 300. Um, So this causes people to get a little bit of an anxiety. Absolutely. Uh, They get a little anxious about their investments, about their money. They're not sure what to do. (laughs) Crazy. decisions to make. Absolutely. You know what he does? What's he do? He doesn't even look at it. Yeah. He checks his investments four times a year, okay? 
He ignores the ups and downs. He checks them at the end of each quarter. He looks at what he's doing well. He looks at how he's doing not well. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Oh, wait, well, yeah, because I've stressed myself out a couple yeah. times in the last month. Yeah. And, you know, an- another big advocate of the buy Slocum. and hold. <laughs> the Alabama hammer is yes. here. Yes. Mr. Hammer Slocum. Time. Well, it's, it's Alabama hammer. You know Mike Slocum? Yeah. 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 Alabama, Alabama hammer. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Um, but look, he, he looks at it, and Warren Buffett... By the way, the Alabama Hammer is a big Carrie Underwood fan. I just didn't know if anybody knew that about That's him. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. But Warren Buffett is another advocate of the buying club, hold. too. Okay. All right. All right. Um, he says not to look at it. He ignores the ups and downs because it's, it's about time. Okay. Okay. How much time do you have on these investments? Uh, he ignores the news in between. Investment news leads to making decisions based on emotions. You never should make Hi, Jason. big... Uh, see you, buddy. You never should make big decisions based on emotions, okay? Which is what so, we do all the yeah. time, isn't so it? So when you see these market swings, uh, when things are going really well, you're excited, right? You want to put more money in maybe. Or, or you, you, you love the company you're in because it just ran up 10 15%. Uh, when it drops down, you're like, oh, my God, I made it. I've mistake. lost. And that's the thing. I often think about that. Like, oh, I think, oh, man, they took it away from me. Yeah. I had that money, but yeah. now it's gone. Yeah, you know, one thing he said was, as humans, we fear loss more than we appreciate gains. Oh, yeah. I agree with that yeah. completely. So we're, we're more scared. I'd rather scared. break even. Yeah. We're more scared in these times when the market pulls back. I think it was back in 2009 when it, when it had the huge pullback and a lot of people got out. Yeah. Well, a lot of people got out and they were scared. They held on to their money. And then what did they do? They missed the run. They waited until it came back up. That doesn't make any sense. You missed that, that, that whole gap there. They said the market on average rises three out of four years. Yep. Okay, I think it does. Yeah, I agree. Over that. long periods of time, stocks will beat inflation, but CDs and savings accounts won't do that for you. Right. So, yep. uh, it's important to look at how much time you have, and and before you need the money that you have invested. Because remember, I think I think what people got to remember is that those savings accounts, these ones that are paying good interest rates, and when I say good interest rates, a point and a half, two points. Yeah. Right. They can't lose. Right, yeah, but the they can't the gain a lot either. You're capped, and right, and he would he would also tell you only emergency money goes there. Everything else needs to be in play, conservatively, right? I mean, or whatever your risk tolerance is. Yeah, I mean, but <clears throat> but for the most part, if you've got a time a time horizon of ten, twenty years, or however long you've got, you can ride out these seven hundred point days. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We're talking about days, and you've got 10, 20, 15 years, 25 years, 401k accounts. I mean, there's no reason to get in there and start making crazy uh, moves based on, you know, a couple of days worth of action. Well, and what what I've done, I mean, granted, not at a big level like some of you guys may have, but it is buying now on the pullbacks. Don't readjust the... If you thought you had a solid investment and that company is a solid company with solid yeah. earnings, buy the pullback because they're if if they really have real earnings, they're a rarity these days yeah. to some degree. Buy it and keep buying. Yeah, big thing that that Warren Buffett says is why do you, why did you buy the company? One because you liked it because it makes money. So until that changes, until the scenario or until the narrative changes on the company, why would you sell it? No need. Yeah. Unless you need the money, right? So, so just because the market swings doesn't mean that, uh, that yes, the company hammer. changed. Yes, hammer. The dollar cost averaging is great when, when the stocks goes down and you have more cash to put in it. And that's a great thing to do on a schedule like Clark's saying. You know, he looks at once a quarter. So that's, that might be similar to when he puts money in. So right. at that time, if you schedule it, then it just it takes well, the emotion out wouldn't of you, it. Wouldn't you say, too, I think that the reinvestment of dividends don't just take and pound that... Uh, 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 check you get for the dividend check, and feel like you got money. Reinvest it right back into that stock. Yeah, yeah. and you know there's some there's some uh, uh, trading companies that will let you uh, reinvest the dividend. They'll they'll buy percentage of a share with the dividend instead of paying you the cash. Yeah, and that'll add up. They won't charge you the commissions. Yeah, yeah like I told you, deal. I mean I'm I'm doing it right now with uh, uh, a bond traded fund. Uh, it's great. It's one I've told you to get in a long time, right? It's doing it's doing fairly well in terms of uh, value, but basically paying an eight percent dividend annualized uh, monthly. Uh, yeah. You know, so you, you make 
$18. But what you're saying is right, is that it's taking $18, it has a $22 stock value, and I invest $18, so, yeah. which equals about 80% of, uh, yes, you're of one share. you get eight shares every time that pays out. Absolutely. And yeah. so so now your share growth has maybe over five months grows by five shares. I mean... Yeah, but think about 10 years, though. I mean... But I didn't lose anything. Yeah. That's the key, yeah. is I grew my shares without even feeling it. Because I think that's what you were talking about earlier when he's talking about we're more afraid of losing because yeah. it's an emotional thing. I, I And I think that people aren't trying to get in the market because they don't understand it. And again, we'll go back to, you know, Robin Hood. You know, uh, I'm a huge fan of Robin Hood. I'll put a link down below. Um, but Robin Hood is free. Well, it the, doesn't charge any commissions. It doesn't charge any, it's, it's not free. You don't just get yeah. any share you yeah. want. But they don't charge a commission to anybody. They're making their money on people that are trading on margin or borrowing. Uh, but it's a great, what a great way if you have a, to Brady, your son's, what, 15 years old almost. And if he wanted to get into the market and learn, without having to pay commissions, it makes it a lot easier to give him $100 and let him just in and out of stocks and not worry about it. Now, I'd hate to be y'all's tax guy having to do 900 yeah. different deals at the end of the year on the tax form. But Robinhood is just a game changer um, because it's free. And I tell you, they, they since they've come into the market, they have lowered the commissions of these other big guys. Absolutely. Just to compete. Just to keep the business. You know, the funny thing uh, that Clark was saying, he says CNBC and other financial news media have to create drama to keep eyeballs. And Man. pretty women, right? Have you ever seen yes. an ugly person? Oh, an no. ugly woman. I've seen plenty of ugly men on there, but there's never oh, an ugly woman. Not. Of course. But I, I'm telling you, but, but that's true on, on most news accounts, right? Yeah. That's true on most mm -hmm. people, maybe people in your office, people in your life. What do they do? Are they talking about other people? Because that negativity and stuff, it, I don't know, hey, people Kelly. like to talk about it. People like the drama. Absolutely. It, they're attracted to it. So CNBC What are you going to do? I just it. thought about this. You have CNBC rotating through your office on a big TV. It like does. It. So it does. It, you know, he's kind of said some curse words about him, right? Yeah. Doesn't so, like him. I mean, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to filter that through the, 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 <laughs> the Clark filter, right? Absolutely. But no, I mean, you got to understand, they are trying to hit some hot buttons. They're trying to, to stir up emotions. They're trying to get you interested in what they're saying. They're trying to get you to like them, right? But he's wanting you to just to, to turn off the TV is what he's saying. Uh, and don't check your account all the time. Well, that's hard. That's I know there's people out there that do that. Oh, that You're looking at your okay. investment Look account this daily. Guy. The stock market goes down 700. What's the first thing you do? Well, you yeah. pull up your account. Where's it at? Well. Yeah, folks like, but then again, you know, if you if you know what you're doing, like Courtney, you just it just goes flying high, right? I mean, of course, right? I mean, yeah, and then I mean, yeah, and that's that's one part about being uh, diversified. Let's say, yeah, um, you know, it's spreading the money out, being in good investments, so so you can kind of reduce the risk. Again, how long are you investing for? That's are you man. diversified to reduce the risk? Well, it's 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 not investing if you're invested for three months. You're invested for four Yeah, that's that's more of uh, day trading. Gambling. Gambling. Nothing try, wrong with that if you're in money, Vegas. Fine. I mean, cool. Yeah. But don't call yourself an investor. Yeah. If you know what you're doing, I mean, some people can absolutely money quickly. They yeah. can turn turn money quick. Absolutely. But, you know, I'm just looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's a price-weighted average of 30 significant stocks. In 1990, the value was 2700 in 2000, it was 11700 That's a huge jump in 10 years. index fund on all this. Man, 2010, it was a little bit less. So, first 10 years, a huge jump. Next 10 years, flat. Today, eight years later, 24,500. Another huge jump. Yeah. So, the point is, is that over time, it's Absolutely. gone up. Absolutely. But you, you see, there was a reason for all of this. I mean, Bill Clinton had us in a booming economy there, right? And then a war got in the way. Exactly. Dagum, Al Qaeda. I mean, they blew it for us. Exactly. But but they set us up for another boom economy that came right out of it. I mean, we need to have those pullbacks. So long term, we're advancing, right? Long term, we're improving. And even in these tough times, what did we have? We had interest rates go to zero. Oh, you were the phenomenal buying period. So for what does housing. that do? That puts money back to the consumer's pocket. So even though the stock market wasn't performing, we were still doing things to. Well, kind well, of offset that. There are bumpy areas and rough patches, but my point is that over time, this 
you know, being invested long term. But a lot of people made money in the stock market up through 2008. Yes. Right? I mean, yeah. so this idea that the market was flat from 2000 to 2010 is a misnomer because it flew up right. if you yeah. got off the yeah, train there was a big, the right There time. was a big move up to around 15,000, 16,000, I believe, uh, uh-huh. right before the drop. And then it came back down. Slocum's talking about Clinton had nothing to do with the economy. Arguably, that's correct. Reagan, obviously, uh, the tax cuts from the Reagan era spurred the growth. Very arguable. Uh, obviously. Yeah, and you know what? And I think some of this... Uh, Stash. Stash Invest, another good one. It's an app. Same thing with, I believe, Mark Wood, you can tell me, but I think, is it mainly mutual funds? I can't remember. Uh, can you trade individual stocks out of there? I don't know. And now, good and now, Clark Howard also says that right now we're due for a huge pullback. But, again, you look 10, 20, 30 years down the road that most of us have time for that money to sit, we're going to be higher than we are today, in my opinion. Okay, yeah. So, so they'll allow you to invest in the ETFs, which is exactly what most of us need to be in, exchange-traded funds, right? right. Yeah, yeah, that's a whole other yeah. topic, but yes. Yeah. We, every time we test that water, you, you're either going to, I found most individual investors are either going to get really burned or really do really well. I mean, on an individual stock. I, I think that the ETFs are really... Yeah, an individual stock game, unless you've got enough money to spread that out over several names, the individual stock picking is... It's tough. And it, it, be you really hard. still should be part of your portfolio, but how much is a, is a thing? Definitely. And you should be able to play. Like Mark Wood's saying, Stash, he uses Stash and Robinhood, and I think that that's a good thing. One of the things, too, is, uh, is Stash, they take a certain point every time if i'm remembering right with stash they take a set amount all you know weekly daily whatever it is and they'll you pay a small fee I, the fee's not bad on stash i mean they, they have a management fee of maybe one yeah. percent and i think they'll actually the first five thousand may be free um but you know i tell you the other thing is as we transition in this is that i tell you what is getting more expensive that we're not i mean i know we've talked about this before but health insurance is getting to be a Big deal again because uh, silently rates are creeping back up. And we're seeing it with a lot of these buyers and people that are getting new jobs and having to think about that. And it's starting to be a big deal again uh, where we're seeing not only prices going up with health insurance, but out of pocket premiums, at maximums going up, and also their deductibles going up. Yeah, and I tell you, I, and I had uh, several years there, uh, I'd say over the last. Uh, five to six years, uh, the first four, uh, I was with Blue Cross Blue Shield, and, and the premiums were going up, it seemed like, every six months. And I think I was up to close to maybe, uh, I don't know, 900 to to $1,000 a month that I was paying <laughs> out of my. pocket I mean, for just, health insurance. It's asinine. And then I, I switched over to United Health uh, on a high deductible plan. So my deductibles are higher, but my Monthly premiums are down to like four hundred for a family. Or less. For yeah. a family, yeah. let's be real. Yeah. So, so doing the math, even paying my deductible was still that's incredible. At least a few thousand dollars less than Blue Cross. But pride of Southeast Florida is here. One of the great agents from uh, Delray Beach and well, Palm Beach. In, Lisa. I mean, jeez, Louise, does it get any better <laughs> down in Palm Beach? Yeah, she's probably yeah. on. She's probably on her yacht. You know, selling real estate from the yacht. Just so making phone which calls. House? Yeah, whoop. Dialing into is. the Wi Fi, sending the contracts out, getting a DocuSign. That's right. That's the beauty of DocuSign. You can do it from your yacht. That's right. That is uh, right. You can thank John Roberts for that. Oh, yes. I agree. Uh, thank you, John Roberts. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah, Slocum, by the way, everybody. Hey, Slocum, uh, are you going to run for president again in Bruno's 2020? Bruno's back on. Thank you, buddy. Uh, but yeah, did you do you remember when Slocum ran for president? It was the best best PR move I'd ever. I'd never thought about this, but Slocum basically everybody knows the Alabama Hammer. You see his ads and everything. But Slocum sends a PR thing, out, legitimately saying that he's going to run for president. He's going to ask Trump to be his vice presidential candidate. Well, every newspaper in the entire state picked it up. Big Craig instant <laughs> advertising, free advertising. <laughs> yeah, and you know. I'm I mean, gonna try that. I'll yeah, try that next you time. should. Yeah. I mean, it was it really Slocum. I'm not gonna say he was brilliant because that would go to his head. You yeah. don't think his head's big, do you? No, because he's hunting for the big buck. Yeah, he's shooting the big bucks. 
Uh, well, man, moving on. I, we got another Clark Howard topic, you know, on that same absolutely. podcast list too. Okay, so talking about credit cards, and the best number of cards to have is two to four major credit cards, like a MasterCard, Visa. American you got to have at least two. At least two. At least two. At least two. Maximum four, but from different issuing banks. Okay, each one from a different bank. Major bank. Chase, General. City, Capital One. Those are examples. Big monster um, mega banks, essentially. And then what are you having for? What are you doing? Uh, rewards? Are you getting miles? I do. Are you getting, uh, what's in your wallet? What's in your wallet? Right. A, a lot of folks would like that woman. What's her name? Uh, they would Jenny like her in their wallet. Garner? Garner. Yeah. Jennifer Garner. Yeah, and she was, yeah. uh, she was a, a superhero. I yeah, movie. I forget. But yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Then her dad was in one of them. Yes. Yeah. So the rewards. <laughs> so what, do you, what cards do you have? So you should know what cards you have. And why you have them. And don't carry a balance. Yeah, don't carry a balance. Because one, one thing that he talked about, in, you know, and always talks about, is your debit card. Your Visa debit card does not have the same protection. It's very important that the Visa debit card does not have the same yeah. consumer protections that the credit card does. Just because it has a Visa logo does not mean... Yeah, and, the, and, and I just listened to something today about uh, DebEx or... Uh, there's a There's a... There's two new debit card, credit card slash companies. They run it like a debit card, but it's got the protections of a credit card. So I didn't know that your debit card has pretty much no protections. A credit card, you can actually go back mm -hmm. and file fraudulent charges and, and recover the money, right? Oh, That's absolutely. what you're talking about, Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, those, and, those protections. There's no reason that anybody should be using a debit card for purchases. That's just none, because you should be having for for a good financial plan, two, as he says, two to four, ideal is three, credit cards, because it's helping you with your debt utilization score. That's why you want, it's one of the reasons we want two, right? Because we want to have, get some more credit out there for, let's roll back to mortgages. Y'all are checking, one of the yeah. biggest factors is, is the score, and one of the biggest factors in the score is the debt utilization. So, so is it, so on these debit cards, is it, and I know because, if somebody gets your number, they are pulling money straight out of your checking account. Absolutely, they and it's are. gone, and and the bank doesn't go back and get that money, right? Well, they can. They, the bank has their own policies. So, so the credit but you're card, not protected by Visa. So the credit card purchase really technically is just sitting there on paper. You haven't paid for it, and Visa or whoever will go back, and and. I think it's important, David, for for us to talk about real quick about what Visa and Mastercard are. What what are they? They're payment processing companies. They, they're they not a bank that holds money. They actually are the facilitator. They're the middleman that yeah. goes, here's a dollar, I'll give this dollar over here, but mm -hmm. while you do that, I'm gonna rip a little bit of that dollar off, usually 3%, I'm gonna rip three cents off every dollar. And so people will go, how can, you know, let's say uh, I pay my bill every month, but I charge a ton on there. Why, people always, have I been asked, why would they like me then? Because I pay it off every month. Well, it's because you're making a slew of three cent transactions. And and that's where they're making their money. And they're not charging you that three cents. They're charging the retailers. That that's are really them. where they make their money. Yeah. That's really where they, I mean, they make a ton of money off people that carry balances. But think about it. People that carry balances can't continue to charge, right? Because if you max out your credit cards, then what, what are you going to do? You can't use it anymore except pay interest. Now, they, they are making... Uh, 16 to 18 to 25 percent on default, oh, default rates, 28 percent. And the interest rates are higher than they've been and ever. And they're going to make a killing there. Well, one thing to remember, too, I think it's very interesting, too. People say, why can uh, Chase, for instance, offer uh, a round-trip ticket anywhere in the world to for you to sign up for this card that costs $99? The reason is the average cost to the credit card companies to procure a customer for themselves, to someone to apply for the card and use it, is about four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars it costs them to get one customer. So they're willing to take that risk because they want all that money down the line. And you know, one of the things is too. I think some of your best protections are paid credit cards. Ones where people go, oh, I can't, I can't have a ninety-nine dollar credit card. Well, some of your annual best protection fee. annual fees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, one of the best out there is the Chase Sapphire Preferred. If anybody doesn't have it, you need to look at it because. One of the best things it does, for instance, is its price protection on purchases, those type of things, but car rental. If you go rent a car, 
Chase Sapphire Preferred is going to be primary. Your own car insurance won't even have to get involved. They're going to provide coverage. And so you have uh, trip insurance. That you know, stuff is huge. Trip insurance. You go on a cruise. When I went on this last cruise, I didn't need to buy trip insurance other than health type coverage because that was automatically covered by my credit card that I was paid $99 a year for, but it becomes a good deal, especially if you yeah. take it. A yeah. couple trips. Yeah, you got to get that information and look into the details of that. Um, and that's some stuff that, that, that people take for granted. You know, I, I'll admit, I didn't even know that, um, you know, that you could get into these debit credit slash companies that, that run, a, and I've never even heard of them, that they kind of run like a debit card but have the protections of a credit card. Yeah, it's, 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 it's unique. That, but those people are filling voids because, I mean, I think it's so important. I mean, see, here's the problem, and you will never hear Clark Howard, for instance, really mention Dave Ramsey by name, but he does say, I disagree 100% with Dave Ramsey relative to the debit card. He goes, it is a terrible card, and he bets uh, that I think that Dave Ramsey does not use his debit card everywhere because it's unsafe. Yeah. And, you know, this stuff is part of uh, financial literacy. It probably sounds hard. People don't want credit cards because it's tough to manage, right? And they get, Absolutely. And, and they don't uh, responsibly use them. But some of that hard stuff is important to, to learn and, and figure out and do. Absolutely. You know, we talked about the effect on the credit score, but remember, we, we talked about it a few weeks ago about even insurance now is rated. You're rated based on your credit score. So the idea, you know, one of the hardest things we find, and you probably do as well, we get a lot of these young girls coming out of college. I'll say young girls, 21, 22, coming out of college. Dad's paid for all of their stuff. They've always been on dad's accounts. They have no credit. One of the best gifts they could have given that child is the ability to start at about 18 getting some credit yeah so we don't have to go through these things because women are typically a more mature and more uh willing to uh get their own credit yeah yeah well i think i think the biggest thing is that people are just so anti-credit cards because there, there's this uh stigma about them because they've been used irresponsibly for so long absolutely and it's not the credit card doing anything to you it's how you use it Right? Absolutely. It's yeah. just like gun control. The gun didn't kill anybody. The person operating it did, right? Absolutely. So I think it's just uh, I think it's just a change in the uh, the message and the tone and an understanding of how to be more responsible with that and and use it to your benefit. Absolutely. So anyway, I mean, it's it's another thing too. I mean, it, you know, what's funny. All this comes back around to real estate, it, it, to whether it be the mortgage side, and for us, it's getting a consumer into that new house. All the stuff we talked about affects their ability to get, not just, the, the your credit score does affect your ability to get a good rate, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah. uh, and good financing terms. I mean, just just the difference between a, a, a 3% down conventional loan and a 3.5% FHA loan. I mean, you're gonna spend less money on the 3% conventional. Not, not just the down payment. I'm talking about over time, the mortgage insurance and things like that. So, yeah, they, that credit score and your credit rating has a big effect on all of your finances. Absolutely. Hey, Ann, I hope you're doing well. Um, well man, I, I know that's about all we had. I, yeah. You know, this weekend we've got the uh, Mount Laurel Spring Festival. Always a good time. Good yeah. one. If you're new yeah. to town, hit it's, that up. It's in Mount Laurel from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. If you need more information on that, go to mountlaurel.com. Another thing I saw on uh, Facebook today was the Woodlawn Street Market. Never been there. Never been there. But uh, that's in downtown Woodlawn. Wanted to bring that up from 10 to 4. So yeah. We're back in that time where we're having all these festivals and yeah. good so, times. And, and man, by the way, Pepper great. Place will be back, yeah. right? Pepper Place will be wide open. Uh, the weather has has been great this week and uh, a little cool yesterday. And it was. But, and it was but, a little cool this morning too. Yeah, but really nice. Starting starting to warm up. The Masters is going to be going on. Be popping the rest on of this it. weekend. Yep. So uh, a lot of lot of cool things going on. And you're going to see Chris Rock, not Chris Rock. No, uh, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Same Kevin thing. Kevin Hart. They're about the same, right? I mean, kind of. I don't know. I love Chris Rock. Yeah, both both comedians. comedians. Kevin Hart is really short. I don't know how tall. 
I think Chris, Chris is, is real short. But uh, I don't know why we're talking about the size. Dude. But yeah, very funny. Well, Kevin Hart always makes. I, and I, really actually, short. I love Chris Tucker too. But, but uh, I think all of Kevin's comedy. You taking easy. the kids to see him? No, no, I don't think that's going to be appropriate. Uh, yeah. But we'll see. It, well, your oldest daughter could go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, guys, we will see you next week, same time, same place, and uh, we'll have the happy hour. Have a wonderful weekend. All right. Tiger wins. See you guys. Tiger Woods wins. I'm just throwing it out there. That's a good he, prediction. I mean, Sergio why not? Sergio is not. Sergio is not. Doink. <laughs> <laughs> he 10 cupped it today. It was like he in 10 cups. He four in the water. Yeah, on purpose. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. See you. Bye-bye.